Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. As usual, the show is brought to you by Elevate Farms. Elevate Farms is a technology and IP-based indoor farm that produces traditional farm-grown equivalent products at wholesale market price with a global footprint. Go to elevate.farm for more information. Sonny Joy Nelson and Kingsley Cortez are both former Trump campaign staffers who work for the social media platform Getter. It's been getting a lot of publicity and high profile influencers jumping ship amidst censorship on Twitter. They join me now. How are you both? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me back. Excited to be here. Now, Kingsley, this is an interesting way for us to both meet. You've been suspended or what is what's the term they're using for kicking you off Twitter for now? I have been locked out of Twitter. So in other words, I'm in Twitter jail for the next 12 hours. What exactly is that for? Do you did it, I didn't see that they actually told you what it was for. Do you know what it was for? Do you know? Do you think you know? Correct. They did not tell me what it was for. I received an email this morning that my account had been locked for spreading COVID misinformation, whatever mm. that means. Those goalposts move a lot, so it's hard to keep track. Um, but I suspect it was my tweet where I said that, you know, parents shouldn't be giving children an experimental vaccine for a disease that by and large doesn't affect them. Um, I stand by that statement. I think the science stands by that statement. And luckily, I can say it on alternate platforms like Getter. But for the time being, I'm in Twitter jail along with a lot of other folks who have said, you know, similar things about COVID and similar things about the election. Now, do you think Twitter sort of has a target on you guys? Obviously, they're probably their main competitor right now. We could talk about uh, Parler and other platforms. But in terms of publicity and what everybody's talking right now at Getter, do you do you guys as a company feel like Twitter's looking out for you guys and, and maybe this might have had something to do with it? I think uh, definitely. Well, Go ahead, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm sure that they are. Um, anyone that probably comes against what, what they believe is truth, they're going to be coming after. And I'm sure that's why they have their eye on big conservative figures like Kingsley um, and other people that are going to be speaking the truth or even just their own political opinion. Uh, Twitter's going to be coming after them. Now, 100%. Kings and I would, I would add to Sunny's point too. I think, you know, they've seen this influx of new users that we've had. We had Joe Rogan join the platform recently. And the day that he joined, we had 171,000 new users follow him just in that day alone. So I think they're seeing, you know, that there really is a hunger for an alternate platform and they're getting scared and they're scared of Getter because like Rogan, like MTG, who was just banned, Getter is a disruptor. Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys about that huge uptick in, I was going to say viewership, I guess, uh, readership, participation. I've noticed it in just uh, since Joe Rogan. What other names can we throw out there that's joined? Uh, somebody's getting emails. Marjorie Taylor Green. I say Tucker Carlson, but he's been on there for a while, hasn't he? Has Have any of these people really reached out to you guys or is it sort of, do, do people do that or do, are they just sort of joining? Um, people do reach out to us, but Tucker, um, I think Tucker's account is new as of yesterday. Oh, okay. Along with him, we've had Tul Tulsi Gabbard um, and some other, you know, really big names joining. Also, um, Ian, I don't know how to say his last name. I always mess it up. Bowen, I think he's from Yellowstone. If y'all watch Yellowstone, I'm a big Yellowstone girl. So, um, you know, we're getting all ranges of people joining, whether it be political actors, um, athletes. So we've had a huge uptake in users since Joe Rogan joined and now over 4 million users on Getter. Huge, huge increase for us. Definitely. And we're seeing a lot of news accounts start to join too, which is something that's new and exciting for us. We just had Daily Mail join the other day. Um, obviously, we love having you guys on there. Um, Prager, you recently joined. So we're seeing a lot of them. Um, it's really becoming a place where you can enjoy a nice conversation without, you know, fear of censorship for your political opinions. And you can really consume and read news and see what's happening in the world. So that's something that we're really excited about as we see mo more of those accounts join. Yeah, I think it's a big deal when when somebody like Joe Rogan, who's sort of seen as this notoriously centrist person. I mean, I don't believe that he actually is, but he's got he's he's this figure of, I guess, honesty. You could say, and when he when he comes onto the platform, it gives it that much more credibility. And Sonny, to your point, I don't watch. I haven't seen Yellowstone. I keep hearing good things about it. 
I'm, you know, I'm stuck on Thousand Pound Sisters, you know, this show. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's one well, step above 600 pound life, I think. Well, you need to check out Yellowstone. They just finished season four and I highly recommend it. Okay. I'll check it out on, uh, on the streaming platform that I have that doesn't have it, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> Kingsley, how did you get it, get into all this? I've asked Sonny this before, probably too many times, but how did you get involved <laughs> in, in the Trump campaign and politics? Um, y- your father is involved in some capacity. I always forget what his title was. Can you tell us a bit more about how this became your life? Yeah, definitely. So when I was in college um, at UCLA, I survived that um, liberal indoctrination (laughs) camp, thank God. Um, But when I was in college at UCLA, I started writing for a publication called The National Pulse, which is run by Mm -hmm. Raheem Kassam. So that kind of was how I, you know, dipped my toe into a lot of this world, got to know Jason through that. Um, and then eventually worked the campaign with him in 2020 in the strategy department. He was the senior advisor for strategy on that race. Um, and my dad was also a senior advisor for strategy. So it was pretty cool to work in the same office as your parent, um, was also in the same office as Sonny. So that's how, you know, her and I met, um, and, you know, the election being stolen wasn't how we uh, wanted the race to go. Um, but I think in many ways, um, that election really kind of opened our eyes for sure. And a lot of the American people's eyes into just how far these institutions, you know, whether it's mainstream media, big tech, um, how far they're willing to go to censor um, opinions that they don't agree with. And I think that's why our CEO, Jason Miller, really saw a need for something like Getter. When we saw, you know, them censor the president of the United States, that was a big wake up call for a lot of people, I think, on our side. I'm still holding out for the My Pillow website. No. <laughs> so are you from California then? I'm guessing if you went to school there. Well, I do have to say, um, quick note on the My Pillow, I'm okay. currently wearing my slippers. Well, um, so then. I would recommend the my slippers. They're incredibly comfortable and awesome. And use promo code Steve. Oh my um, god! Anyway. I knew it. I was about to ask if there was a promo code coming. You're not cool in conservative circles until you have a promo code for the pillow site. So, are you from California? I am not. No, I'm originally from um, Chicago and okay. living in New York now. Getter is um, headquartered in New York. So, yeah, unfortunately, I've only lived in blue cities. I should be more like Sunny and live in, you know, a red state where it's warm and the taxes aren't terrible. But <laughs> unfortunately, I'm stuck here in New York. So when this is all happening and you're coming up writing for National Pulse and then working for Trump, are you seeing a different treatment of you when you go home? Like, is that a real thing? I've talked to, who have I talked to? I know Owen Schroyer from InfoWars was big on like, I lost a lot of friends for my politics. When you're going home or when you're in school, are you seeing people, you know, be like, oh my God, I can't believe she works for such and such. Is that a real thing? 100% 100% it's a real thing. Um, working on the campaign, you know, I can definitely say I lost a lot of friends. Um, my family has not been invited to a Thanksgiving um, with our extended family since 2016, oh since Trump goodness. won. Um, so, yeah, I think there is unfortunately a lot of animosity. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't have to be that way, but it's the political climate that we're in right now. Um, And I think that I've seen just interacting with Getter users, a lot of them have said, you know, they've had similar experiences. So it can definitely be tough. um, But, you know, I think that when you believe what you're doing is right, it's important to stand up for that. Um, And I know that's something that like Sonny and I definitely always try to remember when the going got tough on the Trump campaign. Um, So, yeah, definitely. I can speak to that for sure. Sonny, what do you think is the, going forward, 2022, let's put our 2022 goggles on here. How do we reach to this this younger demographic that I'm guessing you guys are part of? I I think you're both 20 years old, is my guess. Um, (laughs) I'm 19, personally. um, (laughs) What do you think are the methods to, you know, get people more involved? We've got the, the political groups, the TPUSAs and such, but... I feel like there's a section or portion of the generation that kind of sees that as like still too establishment. Do you have any any thoughts on how that gets better moving forward, how you get people involved in wanting to actually change real policies and not see it as some sort of hopeless cause? 
You know, you actually took my first answer because I was going to say um, places like Turning Point, they have a lot of great information for people. But for those that are turned off by um, groups and organizations like that, I think you take it back to the basics and you take it back to the policy and to policies that are beneficial to every single person's life. Um, take it to, uh, you know, the First Amendment, your, your freedom and your right to speech, something that's been taken away from so many people. And we've seen it not just just being conservatives that are being attacked online. You have people like Nicki Minaj who are getting censored on Twitter just for stating her opinion. And I think when you see that start happening to more mainstream people, that will start resonating with the younger generation to say, hold on, I don't think I want to live in a country that censors what I can and cannot say online. So if you take it back to um, just policy and things that really impact your everyday life, like gas prices, then those are types of things that will resonate with people moving forward into 22 in the midterms. Kingsley, are you going to be creating TikToks like Sunny to reach the youth? <laughs> um, I will not be creating TikToks <laughs> like Sunny. Well, I haven't gotten engaged yet. So maybe if I'm fortunate enough to get engaged, <laughs> I'll also make an engagement TikTok. Um, but no, on that note, um, we are going to be launching um, a sort of TikTok competitor as part of our getter platform. Um, and we're going to have, you know, the ability to create short videos. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that is, you know, we've seen how successful TikTok is with the younger gen. So I think that that's something it's a market that we definitely want to pursue and go after at getter. Um, you know, just young, younger people, we have shorter attention spans, I think just growing up looking at screens and stuff like that. So I think, you know, those, kind of short bursts um, and quick videos are really popular and something that, you know, I think we'll continue to see more of on Getter um, as the app continues to add exciting new features and new developments. We might wink. Can I make a disclaimer that I don't okay. make TikTok videos oh, okay, sure. for whoever goes and press Sunny find... does. Sunny does all of the dances. <laughs> is this true? I do not. No, this is not true. Although I have tried some of them. My cousins tried Only to teach some me of some of them. them. Guys. I, I don't do any of the dances. Hey. Quickly move to some of, some of them. We see where this is going. Hey, they stay in the drafts. They don't see the light <laughs> of day, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, the shorts on YouTube are ob are blowing up. I kind of try to use them to break through the algor algorithm a little bit, which is obviously one of the reasons I like Getter because it has a you know legitimate algorithm where I don't f like – feel soul crushed by posting something and getting no views. <laughs> but uh, how are you guys dealing with, um, Sonny, if you're still in Carolina, I guess your lockdowns aren't really, you know, crushing your life. Kingsley, are, if you're in New York or Chicago, are, what, what are we on? We're on like round four up here. We're on a currently a three week lockdown that's supposed to end in two weeks. We'll see what happens there. How is it going for you where you are? Well, I will say, I think where you are might be the only place that's worse than New York. So I really <laughs> feel for you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, New York is pretty awful. We're, you know, starting to lock down again. Um, and obviously you have to show your vaccine card to eat, to work out, to see a movie. It's absolutely bonkers. Um, and it's just, it's so insane. Luckily we are starting to see, you know, some people protesting there. There was recently a group at um, Burger King that were they were arrested for trying to just eat a burger without a vaccine card. Um, so yeah, blue cities are just awful places to be. I mean, the taxes are crazy. The crime is skyrocketing. Obviously, you have all of this vaccine mandate stuff. Um, so really not, not an incredible place to be in a dem city these days. But, um, you know, trying to do what I can uh, to bear with it. Uh, have a lot of friends, you know, who also don't have vaccine cards, obviously. So we'll have apartment, you know, get togethers and things like that. But, but no, it's, it's really frustrating. And it's even more frustrating when you see, you know, New Yorkers like AOC jet down to free Florida and enjoy, you know, the benefits of a Republican led state. Um, while, you know, the, the citizenry here is stuck in New York. Yeah, that was really weird. She, just championing always where she's from, acting like she's from, like she was in a gang or something growing up, <laughs> basically how she talked. <laughs> then she's in Florida hanging out with like drag queens and everything and, and gets COVID. What was this video of her and her and her boyfriend about his feet? I didn't really catch what the joke was about his feet, but she she ended up responding that it was because 
Some somebody wanted to sleep with her is why they were making fun of it. Do I have that right? That is correct. And you know, my last name is Cortez. So I'm just going to start saying that anyone who disagrees with me politically is romantically interested in me. You know, that would be kind of a nice way to fend people off, I guess. But I think the reason AOC says that is because, you know, she doesn't want to engage in a political debate where we have to talk about, you know, facts and what actually is going on with the COVID statistics, why Florida is doing so much better than a state like New York, despite having a lot more elderly people per capita than New York. Um, She doesn't want to talk about that, right? So she just writes it off as, oh, you're obsessed with my boyfriend's feet and whatnot. Um, But anyway, so she's she's incredibly frustrating. Hate having the same last name as her. Um, I didn't even realize that until now. We have to call you KOC, (laughs) I think. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I like that. There we go. But, um, but yeah, she is definitely someone that I hope, um, we can oust in 2022 or later than that. Um, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Hopefully we've got a big red wave coming that can kind of silence a lot of her craziness. Sonny, that's kind of the point, isn't it? That AOC never has to debate or actually discuss any of her views with anybody. Now they can say that she's going to be like president in 2070 or whatever they want, but I don't see her ever getting to a position where she actually has to be on a debate stage. Do you? No, I definitely could not see that happening unless it's something that she could do from her Instagram live. Since that (laughs) seems to be the only time she will actually talk directly to the people. Um, you know, I will say I hate it for her. I hate that she got COVID, but the thing is she took that risk in going down to Florida and exercising her free right to go travel and vacation. Everyone should have that right. But instead, if you just look at the hypocrisy coming from her, she wants her state to be locked down. She wants everywhere else to be locked down and not enjoy any of their freedoms, except those rules don't apply to her and she can go vacation in Florida and live it up. And when you just look at the hypocrisy coming from her, it's astounding. Kingsley, what's your take on this new uh, mayor for NYC? Everybody was kind of hopeful with his tough and crime stance and everything, but it's turned into like the last thing I saw was him saying that he has to battle white supremacy every single day in the city. And that was the reason why he hired his, hired his brother to be a security guard. Whole white supremacy thing. Um, a lot of the equity, the same talk that we're seeing. Is it better or worse than we thought? Or is it basically what you expected? I think, you know, unfortunately, it is worse. Mm -hmm. Um, We were definitely excited about him, you know, having a background as a policeman. I think we thought he would be a little bit tougher on crime and would try and clean up just the surge in um, criminal activity that we're seeing, frankly, all across the city. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like he's heading that direction. As you mentioned, he did appoint his brother. Um, to kind of head up, you know, fixing crime in the city. His brother has no crime experience, no NYPD experience whatsoever. He is not qualified for this position. But, you know, this is kind of kind of New York. This is like the Cuomo brothers, right? It's a similar <laughs> thing that's going on here. Um, and uh, we had hoped, too, that he would kind of ease up these just tyrannical and draconian vaccine mandate restrictions. And it doesn't look like he's going to. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think Adams is going to be a centrist in any sense of the word. He might even be worse than de Blasio, which is pretty hard to do. Oh, man, I hope it's not a de Blasio 2.0. I think everybody I hear talk about New York is says de Blasio is the worst of all time. I can't think back much further than uh, Giuliani, but it's definitely, this. the city appears to be doing much worse. What do you think that is? I mean, I have my own conspiracies. I kind of think that maybe this might have been done on purpose so that some people can buy up a lot of real estate, you know, take a contr- control of the city. That seems to be what's happening here with the crushing of the small businesses. And obviously, large businesses are booming and then taking up more real estate. Bill Gates, of course, buying a whole bunch of stuff. I know I'm jumping around here, but what do you think it's the eternal question of dumb or evil. Which side do you think this falls on in terms of the Cuomos and the de Blasios? Right. I think you hit the nail right on the head there. You know, I think it is because small businesses are just being decimated. Um, The lockdowns have forced, you know, middle-class families who own a restaurant or a small business, they've been forced to shutter that business. And I think the financial hurt that comes with that um, sometimes encourages people 
to lash out in different ways, whether that's looting, whatnot. So I think, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into why we're seeing a surge in crime. Um, and I think that's a big part. I would also say another huge component is just, you know, that they've seen criminals throughout the city have seen you will be released no bail if you that's commit a thing crime. I couldn't remember. Sorry for interrupting. That's the new thing. Um, what was it? Armed robbery. As long as you don't hurt somebody, then there's correct. not going to be any jail time. Was that correct? Correct. The city has announced, you know, that they will no longer prosecute a number of crimes. And armed robbery was one of the ones on those lists. So that obviously is just going to incentivize bad behavior across the city, right? We're just going to see um, absolute mayhem. Um, so I think just, you know, the reluctance of leadership to be tough on crime because they're scared, you know, of being called racist or white supremacist or what, whatever it is, right? Um, the reluctance of them to enforce the laws that they should be enforcing, that they took an oath to enforce, is really, really going to hurt the city and make it a dangerous place, um, like it was, you know, before someone like Giuliani came in and really cleaned it up. Where's Batman when you need him? Sonny, I was talking to you. <laughs> This is what you have to deal with on my show is my bad jokes. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll cut out any <laughs> silence where they're and place a laugh track over it. Sonny knows. Or um, crickets. <sighs> See, this is the parts we have to cut now, producer, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> I want to ask you, I was talking to John Doyle last week about the, you know, supposed red wave for the midterms. What are you thinking? Do, do we think it's going to be a red? Because we're disappointed every time, you know most popular president of all time, Joe Biden, up here, greatest prime minister of all time, Justin Trudeau, you know, the votes never lie. What are you thinking coming this summer? It's five-ish months away, I want to say. Do you think it's, you know, as strong as everybody thinks it's going to be? Or are you leaving the door open for some disappointment, whether artificially or realistically, in terms of like who wins? <laughs> Well, I will say I'm an optimist, so I am hoping for a huge red wave. But I think what what's different this time about other elections is that Joe Biden has done such a horrible job just within its first year as being president. We have, you know, an unprecedented supply chain crisis. We have bills going up, immigration out the wazoo. We have wide open borders. Um, and a lot of people, I think, are finally realizing what their vote for Joe Biden actually meant. It wasn't just for a nice guy, somebody who says nice things doesn't hurt your feelings on Twitter. They voted for bad policies. And so I think that people are really feeling that in their pocketbook and they hopefully will make that um, make their voices heard come November when we have our midterms coming up. And hopefully we will have a good announcement from President Trump, because I know he said that he is going to make his announcement after the midterms. So I'm crossing my fingers and hope we have an announcement coming from him around November, December of this year. So you want him to run again then? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would love that. I think it's going to take a strong leader like him to pull us out of the mess that Joe Biden and the Democrats have put us into. What do you guys think is the next thing that the Democrats sort of, sort of shift to? Because I'm seeing basically a global shift away from the COVID narrative. If I'm being completely honest, we're seeing them from the CDC, everything down to, you know, our provincial, our state offices here saying, oh, we were wrong about the hospitalization numbers. It's actually half and half the people who come in uh, for COVID versus just with COVID. And we're sort of seeing them admit these sort of things across the board. What do you think the the new narrative, let's say, is going to be going into the midterms? Because they they have to come up with something because Joe Biden is you know, record low disapproving and approval rates, the inflation, the gas prices, the border, you name it. There's not a single marker I think that you can point to that's just like, good job. I, I mean, I guess they try to go with the job numbers, but when you decimate the jobs and bring them back, it's going to, you know, it's going to look good. What do you think that they go with to try to be like, you know, the, we, we can't vote them in just yet, you guys. What do you think? So I you know, think I, that go ahead, go ahead Sonny. Okay. You I think ahead. I think that um they're really going to go national security um, very, very hard because, you know, we're seeing what's happening in Ukraine. Um, and then just today, the Biden administration announced that they're going to give over $300 million to the Afghan government. Um, so I think, you know, foreign policy is an area where 
Biden feels comfortable, right? Because that's what a lot, that's a lot of what he did for the Obama administration. And I think the CDC has just messed this COVID thing up so badly. Um, the, the state is really seeing the elites, the elite class, the ruling class, they're really seeing the CDC isn't going to be how we seize power. It's going to be through the national security apparatus. Um, so I think that that's kind of the next thing that they'll jump to and latch on to. Um, I hope I'm wrong because like President Trump argued for, there is no reason that we should be meddling in foreign conflicts that do not just um, concern the United States, Ukraine and Taiwan being examples, in my opinion. Um, but I think that will really be the next kind of push we see from the Biden White House, just kind of war everywhere um, policymaking. Sonny, you want to go ahead? Oh, sure. Yes, <laughs> um, I agree with Kingsley on that. Um, and it's sad though, because I remember during the campaign, um, one of Obama's former uh, national security advisors actually said that Joe Biden was wrong on every single foreign policy decision that he made throughout his entire career. Um, and that's not someone that you want as your commander in chief or, you know, the one that's running our country, somebody that has been known as being wrong on every single foreign policy decision. Um, I think Kingsley's right. I think it ultimately will come to that. That will probably be the next big thing since COVID is kind of dwindling down. Um, but I hope that Joe Biden will do the right thing and think of American citizens and our men and women in uniform um, and protect their lives over getting involved in other countries' wars. How do we get people to sort of read into this stuff more? Now, with the CDC, what I mean is this data and, and here the data has been available for I'm going to say at least a year. I was looking through my tweets yesterday and my earliest one was November 2020 talking about the hospitalizations and everything. So I think it's just a matter of people actually paying attention. Do you do you think there's a way we can get people to, you know, cut through the politicization of it all in terms of, you know, we're act we're talking about actual life and death here and people's health. Is there a a problem with the way it's presented by the media and the government? Do we need to get rid of like particular talking heads like Fauci supposed to be the guy, you know, like he's the one who feeds us the information. Is there some other way we can get people to, you know, listen and look into things in a more honest manner, do you think? Well, I think that unfortunately COVID has become so political, either you agree with COVID or you don't, and that puts you on one side of the aisle. Um, like you were saying, this data has been out, but when you have people like our own Supreme Court Justice um, Sotomayor saying that 100,000 children are in critical condition because of COVID, when that number is actually between three and 5,000, those types of huge exaggerations just stoke panic and fear into our population. And when there are not not voices of truth out there stating what the real numbers are, then it's hard to cut through and find the facts. But then again, it all ties together because when you have people like Dr. Malone, um, Dr. Scott Atlas, who are actually reporting the facts and reporting um, their research, they're being censored on Twitter just like Kingsley was with vaccine misinformation. So when there's not a place for them to go and report their facts, it all just turns into one big cycle of fear. But luckily we have Getter where we won't censor for your political opinion or your scientific opinion, I should add. Um, then I think that's a really great place for people to go and find facts without opinion included into it. Kingsley, you're a menace to society now. How do you feel about uh, how much blame do you put on the individual person versus the institutions? I'm probably a little bit more negative than you on this, but I want to get your opinion on it. I might surprise you. I'm pretty negative when okay. it comes to um, <laughs> when it comes to the health apparatus in this country. Um, but no, I mean, I would I would definitely kind of echo what Sunny's saying. You know, a lot of this unfortunately has been so politicized that, like you said, it's really hard to find um, accurate information on COVID, just even basic things like statistics, right? So that, yes, that's why Getter is so important. And that's also why independent media like this is so important. You know, people like Joe Rogan, who are willing to have the conversation and willing to ask the questions, right? Because at the end of the day, we should be able to question science. Science fundamentally is, you know, 
question making and hypotheses. That's the very root of what it is, curiosity. And the fact that we're not able to engage in that anymore, I think is really, really sad. And I think it's really dangerous for the health of our country going forward. You know, because we have to be so quote unquote politically correct, we can't even, you know, talk about the real factors that contribute to COVID um, deaths, whether that's obesity, um, heart problems. Um, we truly don't know how many people have died from COVID. And I suspect a lot more people have died with COVID than from COVID. Yeah, that's the other thing. I think it was Brett Bayer on Fox trying to ask her how many people with or from it. My guess is over 90% is just with. Like you mentioned, the comorbidity stuff has been out there. And the old stats that they used to have up there on the CDC's website was just 5% of people only had COVID as the cause of death. So I'm I'm trying to be a little bit conservative or general so as to not, you know, be completely wrong. Uh, and I think it's going to eventually come out that um, once they reveal that, I, I think they have it. I mean, I think they know, considering how long it's taken for them to admit the statistics that are already on there and just go on pretending as if it isn't, I think that they actually know what's going on. Because if they can if they can tell us who's going into hospitals for COVID versus who's going into hospitals and just testing positive for COVID, I think they can tell us if somebody's dying from or with it. That's just my opinion. I think I'll be proven right, right on that one, but I, I don't want to hold my breath on it. I think it, it's about them trying to appear as if they're they're giving us the truth now and we've just figured it out, you guys. We want to give it to you straight now so that you vote for us. There's... In elect, there's the midterms coming up. Canada's got a bunch of provincial elections. Australia's got an election. I'm sure other Western countries might. Uh, hopefully, the Australian communist lady gets kicked out. But I think this is part of their, you know, move to like, look how honest we are, you guys. You, you know, am I making any sense? Right. I think you are, and I almost um, kind of sometimes feel that maybe them admitting, you know, yes, there were more, de much more deaths with COVID than from COVID is kind of a way to hide what we just saw come out last night from Project Veritas, the much bigger evil, right? That they may have known that we were doing gain of function research and not just known, but the U.S. taxpayer may have funded gain of function research at the Wuhan lab that subsequently led to COVID escaping from that lab. Um, so, Perhaps sometimes I go back and forth on this, but sometimes I feel that maybe them kind of, you know, ceding a little bit of the statistical territory in the U.S. on, um, you know, what really happened with COVID and how it impacted the citizenry is kind of to draw attention away from the very good work that people like Project Veritas are finally exposing and how, just how involved Fauci was at the onset um, of COVID being released. Okay, I want to talk more about that for one final segment behind the paywall of course you guys rebelnewsplus.com eight dollars a month or you can sign up for a full year and get two years or sorry two months for free sonny joy nelson kingsley cortez both on getter of course we'll see if kingsley's back on twitter sonny's on there as well and maybe some instagram and stuff and of course follow sonny on tiktok well she'll be doing dances dances <laughs> okay instagram real sunny dances um you know uh, a lot of this and that all this sort of stuff the robot the, the yes. longest <laughs> end to this free episode <laughs> we've ever had rebelnewsplus.com you guys Thanks for watching another episode of Andrew Says. To get the full version of the show with bonus segments, go to rebelnewsplus.com and sign up now.